Hi! Today I want to share with you a cool project I've been working on. It's a 16 steps, 16 instruments, wireless MIDI sequencer which can be used with a DAW to trigger samples and more. This sequencer will also feature a cool 28 by 8 RGB LED interface for easy control. AMD F-Box will serve as housing for the components, so, this sequencer will be, ESP32 based, battery powered, wireless, and it's gonna be designed to be simple and flexible. So for this project we're gonna need, AMD F-Box around 8 by 12 inches, 3 inches tall, 2 proto boards, an ESP32 dev kit, 4 10K linear potentiometers, 16 push buttons, 16 cap erasers, we'll use them as button caps, 2 hinges with screws, a 4 AA battery compartment, and wires. We'll also use an MDF frame, and a 32 by 8 RGB LED panel. The inner area of the MDF frame must be at least 11 by 4 inches, in order to fit the LED panel. So, here's how our sequencer will work. Each of the 16 steps will be controlled by one of the 16 push buttons. The different parameters of the sequencer will be controlled via the four knobs. The push buttons will also control other functions, like selecting the current instrument being edited, for example. The LED panel will provide us an interface, showing which steps of which instruments are active in other settings. We will start our assembly with the push buttons. The push buttons will be soldered onto the proto board, with the pairs of legs closer to each other facing up or down. The left top leg of each button will be connected to an ESP32 pin while the right bottom leg will be connected to ground. All legs going to ground will be connected to each other via jumper. We'll start by placing the push buttons onto the proto board. Each proto board will hold 8 buttons and the push buttons must be evenly spaced between each other. Start placing the push buttons from the first column of the proto board. Place the push buttons so there's a gap of 4 empty holes between the last leg of it and the first leg of the next one. After arranging the push buttons, solder all the legs to the proto board. Repeat the process for the remaining proto board. But this time start from the second column so when we join the proto boards together all buttons will be evenly spaced. After soldering all buttons, glue a strip of cardboard beneath the proto boards to join them. Now it's time to connect all ground legs. First, we'll need to make 16 wire jumpers of about 1.5 inch each. Connect the ground legs to each other using the jumpers as shown. Finally, connect the final jumper to the last bottom column of the proto board. Soon, this is where we are gonna connect ESP32's ground. Having connected all ground legs, we will now solder the connection wires between each button and its respective pin on ESP32. The wires should be 7 to 8 inches in length each. First apply a bit of solder to each connection spot and then solder the wire tip. Now, let's apply a bit of solder to each pin of the ESP32 before connecting the other tip of the wires coming from the buttons. Carefully connect each wire to its respective pin. The list of connections between pins and buttons is in the description. Now we're gonna use 10 pieces of wire, also 7 to 8 inches in length each. Join the tips 5 of the wires leaving 4 of them facing one side and the other facing the other side. Isolate the connection as shown. Repeat the process with the remaining 5 wires. Now, let's put a bit of solder in each of the potentiometer's legs. Connect each one of the four wires to the right leg of each one of the four potentiometers. This will be their connection to ground. Repeat the process with the other set of wires, now connecting to the left leg. This will be their connection to 3.3 volts. Then, connect a 7 to 8 inch long piece of wire to the middle leg of each of the potentiometers. Now, let's connect the 3.3 volts pin from ESP32 to the last top column of the protoboard and the ground pin to the last bottom column of the protoboard. By the way, like and subscribe if you want a more cool projects done with terrible soldering skills. Connect the ground in 3.3 volts from the potentiometers to the protoboard as shown. Connect the wires from the middle leg of the potentiometers to each of its respective pin on the ESP32. The list of connections between potentiometers and pins is in the description. Finally, connect the wire from the positive terminal of the battery compartment to ESP32's VIN pin and the wire from the negative terminal to ESP32's ground pin. Having everything connected, it's time to make sure everything is working properly. The sketch used for this test is in the description. 
Now it's time to work on the MDF box. Print the provided scheme and attach it to the box using tape, making sure it's properly aligned. With a hammer and something sharp, make the initial holes right in the center of each of the button spots. This initial holes will avoid the drill bit from slipping while drilling. Here, I'm using the tip of a 5 16 inch flat drill bit to make the initial holes. Having the initial holes done, remove the pattern and carefully drill each of the 16 holes for the buttons with a half inch flat drill bit. It's important to go carefully as the holes are quite close to each other. Then, with the 5 16 flat drill bit, very carefully drill just enough so the tip of the drill bit makes a small hole on the inner side of the box lid, don't go through yet. From the inner side of the lid, use a 1 inch Forstner drill to dig about half the thickness of the lid. Again from the outer side of the lid, finish the 5 16 inch holes. Finally, drill a half inch hole in the back side of the box. Now for the fun part, it's time to customize our sequencer housing. First, I applied a coat of black spray to both the panel and the box. Then, I used a large bucket full of water to hydro paint our box and panel. I strongly recommend using gloves as you're gonna try this. First, spray some colors over the other, the ink will just float on the surface of the water. Gently mix the colors with your fingers or something else. Then, slowly dip the box into the water until it reaches the bottom of the bucket. Carefully remove it. As this bucket is not deep enough to fit the whole box at once, I repeated the process for the other side. The same process was done to the panel. After the ink fully dried, I started the assembly of the parts. First, I glued together two strips of one and a half inches thick styrofoam as wide as the inside of the box. I glued the styrofoam strip to the bottom of the box as shown. Then I added another strip to the middle of the box. After the glue dried, I aligned the buttons to the holes in the lid of the box and glued the button strip in position. Then it was time to install the potentiometers. Make sure they are all facing the correct direction. I also stuck the ESP32 to the middle piece of styrofoam and added another piece to keep the battery compartment in place. I had to redo a few connections. In this shot it is possible to see the potentiometer's orientation. Now we're gonna make the button caps. Start by using an X-Acto knife to cut about 1 inch of the bottom part of the eraser caps. Try to make the cut as straight as possible. Then, carve the bottom half of the resulting pieces reducing its diameter to around 3 8 inches or 10 millimeters. This process releases a lot of rubber dust so do it in a well-ventilated environment. Place all button caps and test to see if they fit properly. Additional adjusts may be needed. Carefully cut the final 6 LED columns from the LED panel. Be careful to not cut away the resistors to the right of the LEDs. Using the soldering iron, remove any wires and excess solder from the back of the panel, except for the first 3 wires. Off camera I drilled in 1 inch hole on the back of the MDF frame aligned to LED's connection wires. Use instantaneous glue to attach the LED panel to the inner area of the MDF frame, passing its connection wires through the MDF frame hole. Attach the hinges to the back of the MDF frame. Then, attach the MDF frame to the box. Now use 3 10 inch long wires to connect the LED panel data wire to the ESP32 and the remaining wires to 3.3 volts and ground. As shown. The connection details are in the description. That's the result for now. In the next video we'll tackle the software side of this project and test the sequencer. If you have any doubts or thoughts, leave it in the comments. Like and subscribe now. Or the ugly soldering monster will break into your house and replace every electronic connection with his terrible soldering skills. That's it for today, see you next time.